the United States government has gathered a great deal of information about UAPs over many decades, but has refused to share it with the American people. We've also been notified by multiple credible sources that information on UAPs has also been withheld from Congress, which, if true, is a violation of the laws requiring full notification to the legislative branch. Brandon Fugel, the owner of Skinwalker Ranch, says you, quote, led that briefing in 2018 and claims you said you were, quote, already fully aware of the reality of UFO phenomena. Is that accurate? I wasn't leading anything. Before Arrow, did you have any association with any of these folks, any of the people in this core group of believers? No. On today's show, the U.S. isn't alone in investigating UAPs. Canada has their own study, as well as government officials echoing sentiments in the U.S., that governments of the Five Eyes Nations Alliance know more than they're telling the public. The UAP Disclosure Act wasn't the only UFO-related legislation in last year's NDAA. There was another massive piece of legislation which passed that many of us overlooked. Colonel Carl Nell will be replacing David Grush as a speaker at the SALT conference with a session titled The Real Black Swan Event, The Controlled Disclosure of UAP and Non-Human Intelligence. And finally, the reasons not to trust Arrow and Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick just keep piling up. And we seem to be witnessing the downfall of the cover-up, as well as the Pentagon's latest UFO office in real time. It might be time to spin up yet another office. Let's go. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Greetings, beautiful people, you marvelous citizens of the planet Earth, and welcome to the Lucid Lens. I'm just a concerned citizen talking about the biggest story in human history, UFOs, UAP, and other related phenomena. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, leave a like, dislike if you don't like it, that's fine too. But more importantly, get down in the comments. I want to hear the discussion, what do you guys think about the stories, where do you stand on the phenomena, what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to get controlled disclosure, catastrophic disclosure? Let me know in the comments down below. All right. Let's get into this because we got a lot to get through today. So our first story takes us to the debrief with an article titled UAPs in Canada, a conversation with Parliament member Larry McGuire on disclosure, transparency and government action. Now I'm going to read the uh, first portion of this right here. The Canadian government is no stranger to the subject of UFOs, objects that today the United States government prefers to call UAP. Between 1950 and 1995, the Canadian military investigated UFOs, beginning with Project Magnet on December 2, 1950, under the direction of senior radio engineer Wilbert Brockhouse Smith, and developed by Transport Canada to collect data and research on unidentified flying objects. The goal was to apply any recently recovered data to modern-day technologies or engineering. At the end of the first study, Smith concluded that UFOs were ET in origin and used manipulation of magnetism to fly the object or craft. Now, the article goes through a brief summary of Canada's public UFO studies, and the topic, you know, largely went quiet until former Minister of Defense Paul Hellyer stepped forward back in 2005, publicly stating he believed extraterrestrials are visiting Earth. This is pretty widespread. A lot of people know about this. And regardless of whether you believed him or not, he was the first government official from a G7 country to step forward and speak publicly about the reality of UFOs. I mean, that in itself is pretty huge. Unfortunately, Hellyer passed before he could see uh, Canadian Parliament member Larry Maguire, who wrote a letter to the Minister of National Defense claiming that after meetings with unnamed American officials, Maguire suggests Defense Research and Development Canada is in possession of recovered UAP material. Prior to Maguire's statement, the Canadian government established Sky Project Canada led by the Office of the Chief Science Advisor, which the whole purpose is to provide protocol for documenting and addressing UAP observations. And there would also be a historical report, which will be coming later this year. Since releasing that statement, McGuire appeared at the Soul Foundation's inaugural symposium, and the debrief sat down with McGuire to discuss his thoughts on the UAP subject, the Canadian government's position, and his proposals for advancing the subject in Canada. 
So he became interested after the 2017 New York Times story, like a lot of people, and it when it showed that the American government was investigating UAP. He wants policymakers in Canada to understand how over the decades, various parts of the Canadian government have investigated UAP, but it's a diaspora effort. He wants a more formal system in place for both reporting and analysis, which is something that the Sky Canada project will help inform. But he wants, you know, standard reporting mechanisms, but all information to be declassified and shared with academics and researchers. He says he's unsure why the Canadian government shies away from the topic, even though the American government is pursuing it. He wasn't aware of what communication was ongoing between allies with regards to UAP. It wasn't until he found out that representatives attended a Five Eyes meeting on UFOs at the Pentagon two years ago. So Chrissy Newton, the author of the article, asked McGuire, what is the point of Sky Canada, this project, if the Canadian military will not be working with the federal government's science advisor on the phenomena of UFOs? And McGuire responded, it's absurd that Minister Blair hasn't directed D&D to cooperate with the chief science advisor, begs the question, what is the motivation for not being transparent? Minister Blair needs to declassify everything to the CSA, as well as other departments, such as Transport Canada, that have relevant information. He goes on to say there have been several reports regarding UAP sightings near Canadian nuclear facilities, most recently in Pickering, Ontario in 2021. He's advocating support for a new bill C-377 to make it easier for parliament members to gain security clearance and have a need to know to be sure there is proper congressional oversight with programs that require a clearance. Apparently, it's it's difficult unless you are, you know, elected into office to gain a security clearance past that point. You have to already have a need to know or, or some attachment, you know, to a program. And secondly, to provide whistleblower protections, much like we've been passing here in the U.S., Third, to inform parliament members of any previous or existing memorandums or treaties with allies on sharing UAP data. And fourth, clearly articulate a policy decision to be transparent on all matters to parliament and Canadians. Finally, Chrissy asks, why is the Canadian government always following American lead instead of standing firm on its own work in political policies? He says that's impossible to answer without knowing what is being agreed to within the MOUs or Memorandum of Understanding, essentially a treaty. So Canada seems to be in the early stages following, you know, the same path that American lawmakers have been down the last seven years or so. They have a study in progress. They've been working on legislation to bring forward any information or material, as well as implementing protections for witnesses who might have information to share and making it easier for parliament members to be read in on programs that require special clearance and having a need to know. Sounds pretty familiar, right? And I would almost bet that if we you know, took time and looked around the world at other governments, that there are likely similar processes unfolding there as well. And we know late last year, um, the issue came up in Japan. Much of Europe has kind of already opened up their records. France famously did so with the Cometa report. It's really starting to look like the cat is out of the bag. I mean, more and more people are getting brave in politics and pushing the issue to the forefront. Even with the progress that's been made over the last seven years, um, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking of ways that this can somehow get swept under the rug. But the reality is those in pursuit of truth and disclosure seem to be winning. I mean, I love when Ross Colthart says the truth will out. And I think he's right. I mean, more and more nations are openly speaking about the subject, spinning up you know, their own offices or studies. More and more of the public is paying attention. More academics are pushing through the stigma. Different, you know, programs in the private sector are standing up to investigate. Regardless of what bogus reports or statements Arrow pushes forward, this discussion only seems to be getting louder and louder with more voices joining in. I honestly think disclosure is inevitable at this point. There's just too many eyes around the world paying attention right now. The question is, what nation is going to be the first to drop the foot and admit they have knowledge that there is a non-human intelligence presence on the planet, right? That is the first major domino that will fall. I mean, I could see the U.S. accelerating efforts, you know, in the Congress so as not to get caught off guard as rumors keep circulating that China might be willing to disclose. And you know the old saying, knowledge is power. So whoever discloses this knowledge first gets to control the narrative, at least initially. 
I mean, from the outside, it feels like we're sitting on a powder keg right now. I think the nations of the world, I mean, there have to be some back channel discussions at some level because the writing is on the wall. This is coming out. I, I think efforts like Arrow and you know NASA's UAP team, they're merely in place to slow the pace of this. But they know there's only so much they can do, right? And it's all it's going to take is one rogue nation or you know unforeseen player to come forward and then all bets are off. So what do you guys think? Will another nation beat the U.S. to the punch? I mean, at least within you know our allies, it feels like everyone is following the U.S.'s lead on this. Um, but do you think another nation will you know come forward first? Are there, are there back channel agreements you know with other nations not to disclose or how to disclose? Leave your theories down below and hear what you guys think. Story number two takes us to an article on the Hill by uh, former Intel analyst Merrick von Rennenkampf. And the article itself is fantastic and it details, you know, some of the high profile senators who all believe the U.S. has indeed recovered exotic craft of non-human origin, which in itself is incredible. I mean, I already knew all this stuff, but just reading it, it, it just, I think actually there were additional name drops in here. So actually go and read the whole article. But I want to focus on one piece of legislation he calls out because... This largely flew under the radar, and rightfully so, because it was in the shadow of the uh, UAP Disclosure Act or the Schumer Amendment. This was also a UFO-related legislation in the NDAA. It's a very short piece of legislation, but it's very powerful. I'm actually going to read the whole thing. It's that short. So it's right here, Section 1687, Limitation on Use of Funds for Certain Unreported Programs. Limitation on Availability of Funds. None of the funds authorized to be appropriated or otherwise made available by this act may be obligated or expended in support of any activity involving unidentified anomalous phenomena protected under any form of special access or restricted access limitations unless the Secretary of Defense has provided the details of the activity to the appropriate congressional committees and congressional leadership including for any activities described in a report released by the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, the fiscal year 2024. The next part, limitation regarding independent research and development. Independent research and development funding related to unidentified anomalous phenomena shall not be allowed as indirect expenses for purposes of contracts covered by such instruction unless such material and information is made available to the appropriate congressional committees and congressional leadership. Then they go into, uh, you know, to, on to define all those specific terms mentioned above. Congressional Defense Committees and the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence uh, in the House and as well as the Select Committee on Intelligence in the Senate. The term Congressional Leadership means the Majority Leader in the Senate, Minority Leader of the Senate, Speaker of the House, and the Minority Leader of the House. So the Gang of Eight and the Intel Committees essentially, right? This piece of legislation basically says if you're running any program that has to do with UFOs, the Secretary of Defense must inform those committees and the Gang of Eight. The leadership of those committees must be read in on these programs so we can establish proper congressional oversight. If you don't read in those members of Congress, well, then funding to your program gets cut. Now, you might be asking, how do they know what funding to cut? Where, where, where are the programs? We still don't know where the pro these programs are. David Grush handed all that information over to those committees years ago at this point. So they know what funding to cut. They know which programs because they've been having whistleblowers provide this information over the last several years. The Department of Justice has been investigating David Grush's claims into these programs. This is huge, guys. They... They know. They've got the information. I mean, I've been saying this like almost every other video. Like, we, we the public, don't have this information, but the most powerful people in the Senate have been given this. They've been given all the information. They know where this stuff is. Defense contractors aren't going to be happy when their contracts are revoked because their government handlers didn't disclose the true nature of the programs that they're running. So if you want to know why they were actually nervous that things were going to come out and why they fought, you know, eminent domain, this is why they're going to get cut off if they don't comply with this new mandate. Now, without knowing, you know, the details of the investigations that are going on behind the scenes and what actually has been revealed, but, but also what is the actual enforcement mechanism here? I don't see a date 
by which things must be disclosed. I mean, have they already done it? Because this is already signed into law. Biden signed this in, what was it, last November? And this is separate from the Schumer legislation, which had a date of October 18th this year, by which all information must be turned over to the National Archives. So maybe the Gang of Eight has already begun being read into these programs? And if so, that's monumental. I mean, that's what this is saying. They must be made aware of these programs. Otherwise, their funding gets shut off. This is a huge piece of news not getting picked up by the mainstream media. I mean, and, it, and even in uh, this article, it was just a quick little throwaway line. Like, this is pretty massive. I mean, this is these mechanisms are all being laid out over the last several years. Quietly, this infrastructure is being built out to extract these secret programs and cut their funding. And while the investigations have been going on behind the scenes, I mean, it's crazy how much is actually going on right now that even people that are following it aren't paying attention to. It's just, there's just so much. I mean, there is a lot of stuff going on right now. So yeah, if you're paying attention to all these things, you're, you're going to realize that disclosure is inevitable. I mean, it it's happening right now. I mean, do you, do you think this law will actually have an impact? I mean, and is the Gang of Eight being read in already? It seems like they should be, according to this, right? Um, or do you think that somehow the DOD will just ignore it? But then again, we've got the Department of Justice who is independent to that, and they essentially would be the ones who would, you know, track this down. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Story number three, the downfall of Arrow. So in the last four years, we've had three versions of a government UFO program. First was the UAP task force. If you'll recall, this is the agency that David Grush was reporting to while he was at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the NGA. He was his agency's co-lead on UAP and reported to the UAPTF. So the UAPTF was under the Department of Navy, as well as the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. Just one year later, the UAPTF was dissolved and became the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, or AIMSOG. God, I hate that acronym. And the whole, the whole thing is just ridiculous. But this was the successor to the Navy's task force. This was to broaden the scope and duties of the office, moving it away from the Navy and solely under the USDIS. Then, just one year later, <laughs> Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks, in coordination with the Director of National Intelligence, amended her original direction by renaming and expanding the scope yet again due to the NDAA 2022, which included a provision to establish an office in coordination with DNI with the responsibilities that were broader than those originally assigned to the AIMSOG office. Unfortunately, as this task force, which became a group and finally its own office within the Office of Undersecretary Defense for Intelligence and Security, it seemed to turn more and more into Project Blue Book with each iteration. The public reception of Aero started off lukewarm, I guess. I mean, I got kind of excited. I'm like, oh, cool. They're actually having an office. This is you know, this looks legit. But that quickly, you know, eroded as we saw, you know, pretty clearly what their intentions were. And anyone remaining optimistic about the office's sincerity and transparent investigation has all but dissolved with their latest historical report, as well as Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick's, you know, media tour, which just continues to push just a blatantly obvious agenda not aligned with any other serious research efforts. And now Kirkpatrick seems to have been caught in a massive lie, thanks to New York Post journalist Stephen Greenstreet. But seriously, what was he even doing there? How can he say that he had no interest or duties regarding UFOs before 2022 if he's attending briefings in 2018 about one of the most famous UFO spots on planet Earth? I emailed Kirkpatrick some follow-up questions, and he said this, I ended up at that briefing because a congressional staffer asked me to attend as an objective third-party scientist to listen to the presentation. I did not know it was about Skinwalker Ranch until later. I don't recall it being referenced by that name during the briefing. He doesn't recall Skinwalker Ranch even being referenced? 
I replied by sending Kirkpatrick this PowerPoint presentation that Brandon Fugel claims he presented at the briefing. Skinwalker Ranch is all over it, and it's all about Skinwalker Ranch. Kirkpatrick replied, that's not the briefing I recall seeing. The briefing I saw was less polished. Come to think about it, I don't believe it was 2018 that I attended a briefing on the hill. I believe it would have been 2017. In 2018, I was stationed in Colorado. I don't recall ever meeting Fugel. Maybe he's confusing the two meetings. So I reached out to Brandon Fugel about Kirkpatrick's comments. Fugel responded, are you trying to get Kirkpatrick in trouble and destroy his credibility? You better be careful with what you report. To which I replied, no, I interviewed him and brought up the 2018 Senate Armed Services Committee briefing you had told me about. I included his response below and would like to give you an opportunity to respond or clarify. Fugel responded, he, meaning Kirkpatrick, was at that meeting on April 19th, 2018. I give you an accurate account of the meeting and have video, photos, and witnesses. So he categorically denied having taken place in this meeting, says he wasn't interested in UFOs before joining Arrow. The meeting had nothing to do with Skinwalker's Ranch. And then later he tried to say, oh, actually, you know what? I was thinking maybe it was a different meeting in 2017. It was, yeah. But Brandon Fugel, the current owner of Skinwalker's Ranch, he brought the receipts. Uh, he brought photos and the presentation from the confidential briefing in Washington, which took place April 19, 2018, a meeting that Kirkpatrick denied involvement in. But as you can see, he was clearly there and the meeting was clearly about Skinwalker's Ranch. This meeting was years before he joined Arrow. Why would he have been invited to this meeting six years ago when he had no interest in studying UFOs, supposedly? He had, you know, no knowledge of the people in this room or of Skinwalker's Ranch. Of all the experts that could have been invited to this meeting, why were you chosen, Mr. Kirkpatrick? <laughs> Mr. I didn't have any interest in UFOs before joining Arrow. The jig is up. I mean, if there was any doubt remaining about the purpose of the Arrow office, I think this just kind of obliterates it. I think Sean Kirkpatrick is a very smart individual. He likely knows a hell of a lot more than he's clear to reveal. And I think he took this position knowing he would eventually be painted as a scapegoat, uh, you know, in the public. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, he'll be able to get out of this and, and, and still, you know, ha enjoy the rest of his career in private aerospace. I mean, all, it's basically going to be, oh, well, you know, there were issues with clearance and procedure. And I don't know why my office wasn't allowed to be read in on this. These things were hidden from us, too. There's going to be ways for them to, you know, give, give him a slap on the wrist. And it, but so I don't I don't blame him. I mean, somebody had to be the face of this operation, right? He just had a very. I don't know, he's got a face. I'll put it that way. The, the next question is, you know, will, will Tim Phillips, you know, the current acting uh, director, be the person that's over the office when they're finally given the green light to be truthful? Will, will somebody else, you know, a full time director take that position? I mean, will Arrow be dissolved into yet another office with more transparency and, you know, honest intent from the get go? I don't know. I mean, it, it, it the timing of it, who knows? I mean, we could have catastrophic disclosure, but then, it, it, then you know, that might, it, it's going to have to follow the executive branches okay to bring things forward. I, I feel like we're going to have to have some sort of executive acknowledgement probably regardless of what other other nations do from the US before these offices are allowed to acknowledge the truth essentially so what do you guys think is arrow done for is arrow going to morph into a, yet another office are we going to get a new director who's going to have you know be allowed to be truthful i mean i don't think it's the fault of anyone at that office i'm sure there are great people doing work there and, and even the leadership there, their, their hands are tied. There's, they're put in that position knowing full well what they're allowed to do. I mean, so, yeah. What do you guys think? Um, now, that was going to be the last story. But then, you know, as, I, as I'm writing the script, uh, Carl Nell. 
gets named as the replacement for David Grush at the SALT conference. So now if you don't know who Carl Nell is, he is someone who outranked David Grush. He backed up David Grush's claims in that initial debrief article, said he was beyond reproach, and um, effectively said that everything Dave Grush said is true. He has an even more impressive resume, and due to positions he's held, he's likely to be read into even more than Grush was. Uh, here's a look at his impressive accolades on the uh, SALT site. You can pause the screen to read them. I'm not going to read through everything. But he's going to be the closing speaker on the second day of the conference in a presentation titled The Real Black Swan Event, The Controlled Disclosure of UAP and Non-Human Intelligence. Whether disclosure is controlled or catastrophic, as the cool kids say, it, it's going to be a black swan event. I mean, this is going to change everything. And in ways that even those of us who are paying attention won't be able to imagine. The implications of disclosure are going to touch on every facet of society. I don't see a world where everyone just goes back to their day job without the realization of this truth profoundly impacting them. It's exciting, it's, it's a little scary, but we as a species deserve to know the truth of the nature of our reality and what a tiny powerful portion of the population has been hiding. I mean, I'm very much looking forward to what Carl Nell has to say. Does he think that we'll still be able to have a controlled disclosure? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, he sure, you know, hopes so. And, you know, I'm sure you've all seen his presentation at the Seoul conference where he kind of walks through what a government-led disclosure plan might look like. And that's all well and good in a vacuum. But that's not how things work in the real world. Things will come out through leaks, whether from within the government, you know, a whistleblower coming forward, or a witness, you know, the private sector making discoveries, or other nations. And any one of those things can accelerate the process beyond the scope of a timeline that they lay out. So while figures like, you know, Carl Nell push for a controlled release of this information, it already feels like we're in a controlled disclosure, doesn't it? But is that by design of, you know, so-called gatekeepers? Is it a psyop? Is it just the inevitability of, you know, the public chipping away at this issue for a hundred years now? Or is there a deeper, you know, more profound truth? Because if the nature of our reality isn't this, you know, physicalist model that we've been working from for the last 200 years, but it is in fact consciously led like many studies are now pointing to, are we as a collective willing this next chapter of our history into existence? All I know is that once this bubble pops and the first step of one nation admitting the truth, it's going to be balls to the wall, everyone collectively digging into what the truth of all this is. I mean, it's going to be unprecedented, the investigation in the public once, I mean, <laughs> we're going to have all these traditional, you know, places that used to investigate things, they're, they're going to be, you know, full steam ahead digging into this. I think all bets are going to be off. I mean, and, and this dam, it's not going to slowly leak. It will burst. And when it does, I think even those of us who are following along will be left in awe. So what do you guys think about all this? Is disclosure inevitable? I mean, it certainly feels like it is at this point. Uh, do you think we'll have a controlled disclosure or will it be catastrophic or something in between? I mean, regardless of you know what neat, clean plan you lay out on a presentation, the real world doesn't act like that, right? All it's gonna take is one curveball to come and throw the whole plan out of whack and that plan will get accelerated beyond what you intended. I mean, at least that's kind of what I think. So I want to know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, theories, opinions, questions down below. 
And I'll see you on the flip side. To control the process of reviewing the records and recommending to the president what records should be released immediately or postponed and a requirement as a transparency measure for the government to obtain any recovered UAP material or biological remains that may have been provided to private entities in the past and thereby hidden from Congress and the American people. We are lacking oversight opportunities and we are not fulfilling our responsibilities.